Hey everyone, Chap here and welcome to Gaming EXP. In this video, we're going to be talking about Assassin's Creed Odyssey again, and more specifically, we're going to focus on the massive conflict that is occurring during the game, which is based off of a real conflict that happened in ancient Greece, the Peloponnesian War. When you play the game, you are thrown into the middle of the Peloponnesian War as a mercenary, uh, where you can be hired to help either the Athenians or the Spartans in their battles. But how did the war start, and how accurate was the video game to the actual war? Well, the war started out of a combination of two things. The Athenians gaining a lot of power and wealth, and the Spartans not liking that. Look at all this wealth and power we have here. I, you know, I don't like that. Before we start explaining this war, there is one thing I have to explain to you about ancient Greece. Even though the area was Greece, and everyone living in there identified themselves as Greek people, uh, people were first and foremost identified with the city-state they came from. If you were to walk into ancient Greece at this time, people wouldn't tell you that they were Greek. They would say, I'm a Spartan, or an Athenian, or a Corinthian, identifying with the city-state that controls the area they lived in or grew up in. All nationality was reserved for the city-state you were a part of, and you were proud to be a member of that city-state, and you thought the other city-states were garbage compared to yours. Man, it sure is great being Athenian, sitting up here on our piles of money and giant stone buildings, getting to look down at all the other inferior city-states. Yeah, this is nice. For this reason, the Peloponnesian War is not a civil war at all. A civil war implies that it is people within their own country fighting for power of that country. That is not what was happening. Each city-state was its own country at the time within Greece, so it was a war to define political borders, not a civil war at all. During the Greco-Persian War, watch my last video where I talk a little bit about this war, Athens created an alliance with other city-states to push back the Persians from Greece and ultimately stop any further aggression. The alliance was called the Dillian League, named after the island Delos, where the League kept their money to support uh, the war effort. Shortly after the Greeks were victorious in the Greco-Persian War, Athens, who was by far the strongest group in the alliance, took the money from the treasury and started to demand that the other members in the League pay a tribute to them for protection. Hey, it's a real nice country you got here. It'd be a shame if something were to happen to it, like... Another country invading it, burning all your crops, your towns down. You should probably pay uh, Athens to protect you. It's us. We'll burn down your village and take over your territory if you don't pay us. Athens was basically bullying the other members to pay them to keep Athens from taking control of their territories. Athens told the members of the Dillian League the money was to keep the alliance strong, but Athens was using the money to build more Athenian ships and funding public work projects for Athens, like statues and buildings within the city. Ooh, strike one, Athens. And dominated most of Greece, creating the Athenian Empire. Strike two. But hey, Sparta wasn't in the Delian League, and Athens wasn't about to try to force them to pay a tribute. Sparta had their own alliance, called the Peloponnesian League, and their alliance was the only thing keeping Athens from having complete control over Greece. Hey, we're here for the tribute money. Get out of your ship and make us pay it. You have a good day, sir. Then Athens decided to take advantage of a war between Megara and Corinth, both Spartan allies, by forming an alliance with Megara. Strike three. Oh, it is so on. Which Spartan saw as an act of aggression, throwing Greece into the First Peloponnesian War, which ended in a treaty between Athens and Sparta after Sparta invaded Attica, the Athenian region and city. But unsurprisingly, the treaty didn't last very long. It was only about 30 years. And after a lot of antagonizing between Sparta and Athens, the second part of the Peloponnesian War started, called the Arctodamian War, which is the setting for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. During this war, the Spartan king Archidamos II, sound familiar, strategy was to invade Attica and cut Athens off of all supplies by surrounding the city of Athens and destroying their crops. 
which they did pretty easily, actually, because, like I said in the last video, as far as ground troops go, no one could match the Spartans' forces. The Athenians were led by Pericles. Sound familiar? And his game plan was actually quite smart. He knew Athens could not match Sparta on land, but he also knew Sparta could not match Athens in the sea. Both of these points were very true at the time. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I feel like this was not represented well enough because it seemed like in every type of battle, both sides had a fairly equal chance at winning. But in reality, it was a land if it was a land battle, Sparta was probably going to win it. And if it was a naval battle, Athens had a pretty good chance of coming out on top. But I do understand why Ubisoft did what they did to kind of balance the game out and make it more challenging in each type of battle scenario. Anyway, Pericles' plan was to give up the land battles to Sparta and hide behind Athens' walls, using the navy to travel around Greece and take control of territories before the Spartans could have time to retaliate. Because I didn't know if you know this, but boats can move large numbers of troops around faster than troops can move themselves around. Little known fact that children and most people with any logic know. And this plan was working beautifully until a plague hit Athens, killing roughly 30,000 people, including Pericles, allowing a man named Cleon, I know that guy, he's kind of a jerk, and Demosthenes to take control of the Athenian military where they decided to change the Athenian battle plan. Their plan was to be a little more aggressive and to take the fight to Sparta, and they were actually more success successful than most people thought, claiming some victories. Then came a huge turning point in the war at the Battle of Amphipolis, where Sparta, led by Brasidas, hey buddy, and Athens, led by Cleon, still a jerk, fought for silver mines that were funding Athens' war effort. The battle ended with both Brasidas and Cleon dying in battle. Probably not at the hands of Alexandros or Cassandra, though. And that's it for the part of the Peloponnesian War that is in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. At the end, Sparta invades Athens and takes control of Greece. The major impact that this war had was it weakened Greece enough to allow Philip II of Macedon, who is actually Alexander the Great's dad, to come in and seize control of Greece, setting Alexander the Great up to create one of the largest empires to ever exist. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you have a great day. See you all in the next video.